Hello everybody, the Lawn Gnome is here. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. Another Star Wars throwback project episode, everybody. Ah, you thought I forgot about it because I didn't mention it in my last update video. Completely slipped my mind about talking about it, but I knew for a solid fact that this was something that I had to get to you guys on Memorial Day as promised. So welcome to the great Star Wars throwback project, part three. And of course, today we are going to be talking about the last film in the prequel trilogy from 2005, and that of course is Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith starring Hayden Christensen, Ewan McGregor, Natalie Portman, Ian McDermott, Samuel L. Jackson, Kenny Baker, and Anthony Daniels as C-3PO. So this is it, everybody. This is the movie that everyone was waiting to finally see on the big screen. The story of how Anakin Skywalker finally became the Dark Prince of the Sith, Darth Vader. So, of course, after two movies that not that many people were really big fans of, this was the one that was definitely going to get the people back into the movie theaters and into those seats. And one of the things that definitely was exciting for me was what those trailers looked like. They definitely looked darker. They looked menacing. The fact that this movie had a PG-13 rating, which was a first for any Star Wars movie, and also knowing that we were finally going to see that one battle on a rock bridge over a lava pit in this movie, it's obviously not just a rock bridge, but the fact that it was going to be a battle over lava in the most dramatic fashion possible, I was so excited to finally see that moment actually happen. So, I gotta say, without a doubt, especially seeing it again for the first time in a while, this is still my favorite Star Wars movie of them all. I mean, yes, the dialogue is nothing special, especially at the very beginning of the film when you have those cheesy love scene moments between Anakin and Padme. There are some very cringe-worthy pieces of dialogue that are thrown in there, but in this film, those are few and far between. This movie is all based on the action. When you see that opening scroll and you see that opening action sequence, it is something that just excites you. You know that when you see those two little ships flying over that gigantic Republic cruiser, when you see what exactly they're truly flying over, you know that you're in for one heck of a ride. And you get so many great lightsaber duels, you get the final scene with Christopher Lee as Count Dooku, you get this new character, General Grievous, who is this droid leader of the Separatist army, and when he squares off with Obi-Wan Kenobi, it is absolutely crazy. You also get Frank Oz returning as Yoda in one of his most amazing fight sequences. If you thought that episode 2's was pretty cool, you're definitely in for a treat here. And of course, you get one of the best dramatic moments from Samuel L. Jackson as Mace Windu. But oh my god, if there's one thing that I could say about this film is I have to give George Lucas so much applause for how the bar truly got pushed. It's a PG-13 rated movie for a reason, because when you see Anakin rise and officially become Darth Vader, what happens after that is something that can discomfort you to a great deal. I remember friends of mine tearing up when Order 66 officially took effect and when the clone troopers officially became the stormtroopers and when Anakin Skywalker officially becomes the head of the new Imperial Army and what he does to basically finish the war, wipe out the Jedi, it is just so dramatic and so scary and haunting. It's definitely something that resonates, not to mention such a powerful score from John Williams. I also believe that this is John Williams' 
one of his best scores. I mean, songs like Anakin's Betrayal, Battle of Heroes, it's just so dark and so beautiful. There's even some subtle moments in this film that are just so engaging to watch. The scene where Anakin and Palpatine are sitting in the opera house and Palpatine is telling him the story of Darth Plagueis and the dark side, it brings so much of the lore back into the fray and it makes you want to learn a lot more about the Sith. And of course, when you finally get to the last moments of this film, especially the big epic sequence between Obi-Wan and Anakin, it is just something that is engaging, it is powerful, it is brutal to watch, and Ewan McGregor gives us some of the most powerful and emotional lines when he finally leaves Anakin. So when this movie officially wraps up, if there's one thing that you can also give George Lucas credit for is how he closes up all the holes. He gives you all the answers to those questions like how is this going to happen now in part four when we see exactly what's happening in part three but everything from what happens to C-3PO to how Obi-Wan Kenobi gets his hands on Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber it's all given to us I mean to a certain degree there may be a little bit of a fault because I believe that the ending was quite rushed especially when it comes to the babies I mean, look, there's no reason why I shouldn't be giving you guys spoilers. You should have seen these movies by now, and you should know exactly what's happening. But I do believe that it could have been given to us in a little bit more of a slower pace, with a little bit more dramatic fashion, because there are some parts at the very end of the movie that I'm like saying, why is it going so fast? It really doesn't give me much time to really let it all soak in. But that last moment of the film, when you see Owen and Baru looking at the binary sunset on Tatooine, you are just so excited because you know exactly what is coming and you are so grateful to know how we got from point A to point B and you're just ready to put Star Wars A New Hope into the DVD or Blu-ray player and watch those amazing films that were given to us a little over 40 years ago, starting in 1977. So I am going to be giving Star Wars Episode 3, The Revenge of the Sith, four stars out of four. This is without a doubt my favorite one. It is still fantastic. I just love watching it and it really makes me happy when I see this whole story come full circle thanks to this final prequel film. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So leave your comments in the box below and let's have a discussion about Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. And I am looking forward to Christmas Day when we finally start watching and reviewing the original Star Wars trilogy. I will see you in the next one. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you're new here and want to see more of what my channel has to offer, please click on the link to my last video or hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of my uploads. Content of all sorts is posted here quite often, so trust me, you do not want to fall behind. I will see you in the comments, and actions speak louder than words.